Today is May 11, 2016. Um, today was a rather busy day for me, uh, which was nice because I don't tend to think about things as much when I'm busy. Um, when I got home, uh, my husband was sick. He blames me. I don't know why. And I'm still under the weather, but getting better. And, um, but grief has a way of sneaking in when you think you're busy and you think you've got things on your mind and you think that, um, you're not going to think about it. And I was laying in bed trying to get a little bit of rest after we had dinner and a thunderstorm was rolling in. So it was getting dark because the sun has been up at least well after eight, in my opinion. Um, and so I thought I was going to get some sleep and that's when it happens. Usually when I'm laying down, usually when I'm starting to try to rest my mind and slow things down and decompress, those are by far the most vulnerable moments for somebody who's grieving, for somebody, uh, in my opinion, who has lost somebody that's very close to them. And the thought that came to my mind was, the day he had his seizure. He was at home and uh, he was working on something in the house. Uh, I think it was something in the bathroom. And he suffered a seizure, unbeknownst to my mom, who was in the living room because she heard banging and she thought, oh, he was working on what he was supposed to be working on. And it took her a while to figure out that it was something else. And he crawled to the bedroom door to get her attention and she called an ambulance and they took him to the hospital and I got the call from my brother um, my mom I guess I tried to reach me but she couldn't get a hold of me and happened to be at my conference time and I ran out of there as fast as I could have told my team and then I was on out the door because we thought he was having he had had a stroke and um, I get there and just about the same time as my mom gets there and he sees me and he starts to tell me what had happened. He starts to tell me he couldn't control his body and it scared him and he cried. Prior to that day, I'd seen my father cry at a funeral for his uncle Pete and he just sobbed. I can't say that I saw him ever cry again that I remember, but definitely in Uncle Pete's he had saw Aunt Eloise coming down the aisle. I was sitting in a pew and he embraced her and he just cried. Uncle Pete was by far someone who was just so important in his life. He just adored that man. And um Anyways, he goes on to telling me, and he starts crying. First time in a long time. And I try to soothe him. I try to comfort him. I try to tell him the doctors are here. They're going to figure out what's wrong with you, and everything's going to be okay. In the coming days, the word stroke went away. And cancer started showing up in the dialogue between us and the doctors. And it's really strange when you wish your loved one had a stroke instead. You can imagine the mental instability you go through thinking, wow, we should have been a stroke. <laughs> because then he would be here, maybe. <laughs> and I can still see him laying there in the ER room. And he's crying and he's scared and he doesn't know what happened. He doesn't know why it's happening. And 
and his oldest daughter, me, I wanted to make it all better, I wanted it to be fine, I think the doctors did too, in their own way, they wanted it to be fine, they wanted to say it was something else, I mean, they reached us so far to tell us it was something else, but it just wasn't. It wasn't. It was a glioblastoma tumor. My sister, when she first told me over the phone what the technical uh, name of our particular tumor, and I was like, well, what does that mean? And she goes, what word do you hear in glioblastoma? I said, blast. And she said, exactly. didn't slow down. Nothing you did to it. His chemo, his pills, his willpower, his desire to live stopped it. Us praying for him. Because we did. Didn't stop it. I struggle with that. I just struggle with mine, I'm going to be honest. I think that I have made that clear. I'm not sure the coding what I'm feeling or what I'm going through. He wasn't one of the ones that said he was a survivor. Anyways, it was a pretty good day. <laughs> um, aside from that fleeting thought that came in, <laughs> I miss him. I really do. Anyways. Another day. 11 days have gone by of doing this. And I think it's very therapeutic. I hope. <laughs> I hope that you are having a great day. And to Uncle Pete's family. Thank you. He was a great man and my father adored him and is so, he was so in love with his Aunt Eloise. I know I don't get to see her. Please give her a hug and kiss for me and the Cruz family. Be blessed, be encouraged, but mostly be with Christ. <laughs>